the best man in Germany is the Paksha, the best man here. Because he was a man, 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 संसार हुमो हुम सस्या संसार हुमो हुम सहर कर्मयवा समाश्रय है क्या संसार हुमो इन सब इन व्यवहार इन व्यवहार में हमें इन दिस इन दिस दर्द ऑफ संसार इन हुम सर पर जीवा कर्मालोन विकम सिर्फ एक जितना पर आश्रय है प्रिया पदार प्रिस्तार इन शब्द मध्याह्न के संसार है निश्चित भी है वर्ण है ये तो है वो अतः न्यायम कर्मयोग से समान कर्मयोग से समान से संसार हो उन तो स्थिर इधर ही रहता हो ये तो तो क्रिया बना उपरिष्ठा आप तो भी क्रिया बना क्रिया बना इससे आ मेक बिग इधर शब्द में अंधियार हो गया तो तो सुप्लाई रेट वर्ण है कि ये तो है वो अतः न्यायम संसार हो उन से कर्मयोग समाज रस्यार इति न्यायम्, so that alone is proper and keeping the nyaya the reasoning that karma alone should become the determining factor for the destiny of this काला रेख सत्वार अवधार अयोगुम आशन क्या है? Wait, there are other factors too. Karma एव, you said that only karma should be the determining factor. But we say that there is Kala time and there is Ishwara, there is Deva, all these things there. How can we say that Karma indeed or Karma alone is a determining factor? So, this Kala Dehe Kri, Kala Dehe Sat Pradhanaka. So, Karma Pradhanaka. All Kala, Ishwara, Deva, all of these also come into play in our life. In our life, God also comes to play, of course, Devadas, deciding the ages and time, but Karma Pradhan Maha. The Karma becomes the Pradhan. That means free will. So when we say that Karma has Pradhanya, there is free will as Pradhanya in life, that's what it amounts. Karma means action, deliberate action performed by an individual. And deliberate action calls for a deliberation. And deliberation is possible only where there is free will. As we can see, that other living beings do not have deliberation, their actions are all impulsive actions. So they don't have deliberation. In that sense, we say that they don't have free will because they cannot perform premeditated or deliberate action. Whereas well, human beings can perform a premeditated action, a deliberate action also. In that sense, we say that we <coughs> have free will. And so karma or action really means an action, a deliberate action. Not just action in terms of a chest or a movement of limbs, but act by karma, we should here understand the deliberate action. So that shows how this action is so important to the human being. The free will is so important for human being because human being's destiny is decided by free will. <coughs> That's one way of looking at it. There's nothing else in your mind. <coughs> so you can't say what is what. You ask any question about creation and nothing can be satisfactorily answered. And the ninth chapter of Shankaraja asked that, you know. So therefore, the question is, why is this creation there? And for whom is the creation meant? Is this creation for God himself? Cannot be because he cannot have his eyes, his food, huh? Is it for the jiva, the bhokta other than God? God being the only consciousness, then there is no other bhokta or the jiva other than God, therefore, for nobody else also the creation can be meant. Is it meant for moksha? But he is already moksha. Satan is already moksha, so there is. So, for the liberation of what? Is it for moksha of the prattuvi? Prattuvi doesn't need to be liberated anyway because it doesn't have a sense of bond. That's why the body is done. Body doesn't say I am bound. So, it's this fellow who says I am bound or I am security as a child. And so in that sense, you cannot determine really anything conclusively. There cannot be a final conclusion about anything. That this will be so and so in this creation. And therefore, to say that, to conclude that karma alone, you know, because somebody can always ask this question that I perform an action deliberately, all right, but then who, who really prompted me, who inspired me to, to 
perform that kind of delivery, then you will say, the previous karma inspired. Because one is born in those samskaras and there were those kind of inspirations, punya vai punya in a karana bhavati. And then one becomes virtuous by virtuous action. So how can a person is virtuous? Because he performs virtuous action. How can you perform virtuous action? Because he has that kind of inspiration. Why did he have that kind of inspiration? Because he performed virtuous action in the past. Why did he have it then? In the past. And it goes on. So what happened in the beginning? When this past goes all the way to the beginning, what happened? There is no beginning. <coughs> and then that way we cannot trace the source of this samskar. We cannot trace the source of this, what we call the, the, uh, the stimulating effect. So stimulating effect source is what? In the unfulfilling. Ignorance doesn't have any substantiality and ever, nothing has any substantiality, so it amounts to everything. So even what we call the free way also cannot be conclusively determined its nature, we cannot determine its nature conclusively, nor can we determine the nature of what we call destiny conclusively. Because what is destiny today was is a result of my past karma, so that was a free will at some time. So what was free will at one point becomes destiny at another point, therefore destiny and free will also cannot be really distinguished from each other. <coughs> and therefore the whole thing is a mess, you know. I should not say it's a mess, but it's something that is inexplicable. The thing is, inexplicable meaning we cannot conclusively say that this is only this and not this. Which makes the happiness happy. Because that means that you cannot determine what you want. And so it's all mithya. So, samsara mo. In the realm of mithya, you can say that karma or the deliberate action is what really primarily determines our destiny in life. Not totally, but primarily with the aid of Ishvara, with the aid of Deva, with the aid of karma, I mean Kala. They shine all the other factors which are universally applicable to everyone. This is a factor that is applicable to an individual. And so, Ishwara decides everything, but then he decides for everyone. Devutas also decide, but they also decide equally for everyone. They say, all these factors are also there, but they are equally applicable to everyone. And so, we here want to identify a factor which is unique for an individual and a unique factor for an individual that determines his destiny. <coughs> After departure from the body is coming. So Kala Deva, Kala, Ishvara, Deva, all of them are involved, but Karma is the Pradhan. <coughs> so they are all involved, but Karma is the Pradhan primary stimulating factor. <coughs> then the Tika says, Upte Ate, Tauhari Kyani, Shri Mahavadara Devi. Tauha, so we must go back to the passage here, but anyway, so Tauha Yadu Jaguhu Sahamin having repaired to a solitude. What is that to say? Tauha Yadu Jaguhu Both of them Yadnyavati and Aptamada What they say? So Karma Hariva Yadu Jaguhu This Karma is what they talked about. <coughs> having dealt with all other possibilities they ultimately came to the conclusion that Karma or the deliberate action so is the is the most important but primary factor. <coughs> so the next word is karma. Karma pranayana vivadha sarvayavad bravichyuti kaladeh kaladevishwaradimhya kaladeh tat prayantitah karma pranayana vivadha therefore karma pranayana vivadha so I may even Shruti Ambravay. But Shruti himself said Karma Pradhanyam. That Karma is the Pradhanam meaning the most unique factor. Which is good. Because in fact that is comforting to know. It is somewhat, it makes us a bit nervous also. At the same time rather comforting to know also. In as much as comforting to know. Because I decide my destiny ultimately. And scriptures are there to guide me how to deliver it. If this function of deliberation was left purely to me and purely to my judgment, then I certainly can really mess up my life. But the scriptures are there to guide us how to deliberate. And there were scriptures guide us as to how to do the Purushartha, meaning how to really proceed in our life and how to function or how to 
how to act so that we can proceed in the direction of self evolution. <coughs> that is fine. So that is. But at the same time, that also means that the whole responsibility of evolution apparently lies with us also. That means we have an important thing to do. No doubt, God is always there to help. Devda, the whole universe is meant to happen. But still, the initiative has to come from us and the effort of ourselves to make by us. So both ways is conferring. That I don't I'm that I don't have to depend or uh, I don't have unless not in the hands of some uncertainty. <coughs> that one has the free will to determine one's own life. At the same time, it becomes one's responsibility also to do that. There is freedom as well as responsibility, both ways. <coughs> so, karo pranhan meva atah swayam meva abhravit shudhi shudhi swayam abhravit shudhi and self say ohay ujjadhu karma hai vatat ujjadhu so that we can talk about the gross karma which we want to talk about kaalvay vishwara vidya so karo pranhan meva so we have in compared to Kala and Daiva and Ishwara, from compared to all of them, Karma and the Sahaja. Why is so? Kala Mehe Tatpreta. So Kala, time, etc., are able to become the stimulating factor. So main stimulating factor is karma. And then car etc. are able to function or are able to play the role when the main stimulation comes from karma. <coughs> so karma prayutatve, car prayutu means stimulation. Karma prayutatve, car adhe iti mahana. So how come even car? The thing is, even Ishwara also is stimulated. The point is, the Ishwara also functions in a certain way. The time also functions in a certain way, the planet also functions in a certain way, the whole world also functions in a certain way. Everybody is stimulated to function in a certain way. What stimulates that karma? So this follows karma, stimulates even the environment to function in a certain way. The planets also, Ishwara also, Kala also, all of these seem to join hands, you know, in every situation, all of these seem to join hands in order for me, for a given experience to happen to me. <coughs> so I'm hence either in becoming conducive to me or in becoming uh, otherwise. Right? And so adversary are also sometimes I find things are not going the way I like them to be. And everything seems to against me. And so all of them are stimulated to act in a certain way. So all of them are stimulated to act in a either favorable way or all of them appear to me Stimulated act in an unfavorable way. So, what is that stimulates all of them to do in certain way? Karma. Not to feel wretched, you know, and not to feel condemn myself or whatever it is, but this is conclusion. Because that's all you can identify as the unique factor. All of them have the role to play, but karma is a unique factor that brings about a certain configuration every moment into the whole universe around me. So karma prayutrutve, kala dehe, kala dehe, karma prayutrutve. Then even kala etc. are also stimulated or prompted. The way they do things in certain way. Why the planet, you know, they start looking at each other's house in different ways, you know. And so, uh, now Shani is looking in this house and he is going in that house and fix whatever, you know. So different things are there. Why are they like So this, and therefore, some people were saying yesterday, some people were really abused uh, this planet. Shani Hara, of course, is somebody very abused, you know, so kind of thing. This is a best expression than you. I said, the blue does it, the blue also can. And Suri also can. Every planet can. If they are looking in the wrong direction, the any planet can do anything. And if they are in the right direction, they can do also can have a So, we think that the blue and the Shani and the Suri are doing it. But then ultimately, why? What makes them do? What they do? Here it is now. So these are all the expressions of this duty, you know, astronomy. So 
सभी सो द नेक्स्ट वर्ड है सभी कर्मणि में इसी प्रेम भूताना को बदले रहे हैं सभी कर्मणि भूताना में इसी प्रेम को बदले रहे हैं भूताना में बीइंग इसी तरह का मीनिंग भी राइट दैट बीइंग्स हैं आर एंजॉयिंग इट इन राइट और एवरीबॉडी एंजॉयिंग इट इन यूनिक नेस ऑफ इट इन This idiot in just is to find everybody, and everybody has his own, his or her own, or its own idiot in just, or its own characteristics. So that's what it that makes everybody unique. Everybody can claim to be unique, you know? and so not only everybody can, everything can claim to be unique, including the fingerprint also is unique. It must be an amazing, amazing program, an amazing universal program, by which every fingerprint also is decided. It is true that. In this DNA, if the whole program is there, there's one DNA, and the whole program of how the whole body will be, how the configuration of every cell will be, and how every fingerprint will be, and how everything will be for the whole life, is all built into this DNA, which is minuscule, you know, some molecule. Can you imagine that? So what an what an intelligence is built into that big thing. And of course, uh, you can confuse it. You can do maneuver, manipulate the DNA also, and then change things. That's what they're trying to do. All the genetic things are trying to do, manipulating the very source. And many drugs also confuse this thing. Huh? And so, our intelligence can be confused. It can be aided. It can be uh, you know, threatened by external factors also. But anyway, the idea is that it's amazing how everything is well programmed. And No doubt, if you require a universal computer in the form of God, intelligent computer, who also functions through various presiding deities called Nevadas, and functions at a given time, in a given way, and requires certain material, all of this is there. So the unique factor that decides the configuration of an individual is Karma. This is Sabi Karma Vajitriyam Bhutana Upadhyade. Sabi only Karma Karma is there. Bhutana Vajitriyam Upadhyade. We can explain the diversity that we find in the creation only with the with the help of karma. Otherwise, you know, if you say that God alone created by his own fancy, you cannot explain the diversity. If God created without any consideration, then he will be he will be accused of being what partial as well as cruel. And so God will be by if he is created, but then God will say that I gave you what. I gave you in accordance with your own karma, in accordance with your own desire, and that way he is not blamed or is not accused of cruelty or partiality. And that way, God has all of these functions, you know, as as stimulated by karma. And so it is karma which is what he was meant to. So material is provided by God for formation, like the like the pot maker also makes a pot. So what is it that makes a given pot? Is it the customer who wants a given kind of pot and wants the pot maker? That's why it is customer's will that determines the particular form of the pot. You know, so that is how this that becomes this called nimitta. So even the karma becomes a nimitta to determine the configuration of things as they are. That's why in such a karma we say that Bhutana over there. Only one karma is there. Why the term of the diversity of beings, Jaya and Chaitanya, can be explained. All of these also have something to do with my karma. Why do I take one now? All of that, my my weight is involved. That I want a bigger table and a smaller table and a wider table and all kinds of the old fancy that or Indian things that is that. Everybody wants their own kinds of. No being both, but all everybody is different. Somebody wants that, somebody doesn't want them. Different kinds of colors people want them. And when you don't want it, you are stuck with them also. Anyway, so in different, so everywhere, in one way or the other, the why things are around me the way they are. In some way or the other, my will is involved. Karma means free will. My free will is involved in some way or the other. And so, even deliberate free will in the present is not involved. Whatever deliberation that is, the past never be involved. Because very often people don't make any demand at all, and they just live with what is given to them. Then you will say that what is coming to them in the present is because of the the sankalpa uh, that they have done in the past. So this is this is the this is Vedanta. 
but karma is our deliberate action. It's so important. Sati karma yuvai chitya bhutana vandide. Karma shabdhyena vidyasa bhavana karma cha uchchade. Somebody said karma yuvai na kasam ka prana yuvai chitya. One says where is karma? What? You are saying that karma is a unique factor. Where is karma itself? So this karma of the free will has to be accepted by us because of the diversity. That there is a free will also is a question. People question the free will. Now where is free will? God will. So the individual is not given at all. We say that we have to accept something called free will because Bhagavati Triya, because of the diversity. So there must be one factor that is unique to every individual that makes that individual what he or she is because other factors are common. And so the unique factor, God is also not a unique factor, but it is also common to everyone. And so karma is a unique factor. So, Jiva Brechitriyata Vichitram Karma Svikari Vityatha In order to understand the diversity of training in the creation, you have to accept the diversity in individuals, diversity in their free wills, diversity in their families. I'm reading the book from here. Vidya, Karma, Pura, Pranya, Anjit, Hedu, Muktam, it is when you say, not only Karma, in the Buddha and itself, this is said in the sixth chapter, it will be said. Tam Vidya, Karma, Suman, Mara, Hedu, Pura, Pranya, also a famous statement. When this fellow departs, what goes with him? So when he departs to the body, what accompanies him? Vidya, Karma, Pura Pranya Vidya. Whatever kind of meditation is performed. Karma, whatever kind of rituals and actions is performed. And Pura Pranya and Pura Samskara. So whatever Samskara is recorded in the past, number one. Number two, three, meditations you perform in this life. And number three, the deliberate actions and rituals you perform in this life. So action involves action at the level of sense organs. Action in the level of mind and action in a potential form. So potential form becomes unmanifest form or potential form becomes manifest as a thought and an action. So the action involves all the three levels. Causal level, subtle level and gross level. Causal level is in the form of subscribe, impression. Subtle level is in the form of thought. And gross level is in the form of action happening in the level of the body. So therefore, Tam Vidya, Karmani, Sumanat, Suman Maharaja, Pur, Pratnyasya, all of these actually accompany him. So the question is, how come elsewhere we should be said that all these three are the stimulating factors and here you are saying that karma alone is stimulating factor. Karma by karma we generally understand the, the actions performed in the level of body. But it's when we say that even the mental actions all the intentions that go behind the action and samskaras also are also stimulating factors. So how come here you are talking about only karma? Karma, Vartik Karana is saying. Karma Shabdhena Vidyaya Bhavana Karma Cha Uchchara Hai. Why when Upanishad deals with what karma? It is what it includes Vidya. Vidya means Upadana, meaning the action performed in the level. So meditation is a worship. Perform or whatever. It can be good or bad. So meditations can be either meditations on God, it can be meditation on the world also. So all that will be Vidya. And so that is also there. Plus, so there is some effect. The kind of thought, deliberate thought that entertain has some effect. But that becomes much more concrete when those thoughts are expressed with your action. I have some skaras now around. Those some skaras are reserved with thought. And if I entertain those thoughts and encourage them, then I have no harm. So mentally I dwell upon certain things, which also have an effect. And when those their mental dwellings are expressed in the form of physical action, then it becomes much more so much more powerful. So the power increases. The unmanifest state is there, but we don't know. Then we become manifest in the level of thoughts. And then I entertain those thoughts, good or bad, then they also have a result. And if those thoughts are allowed to manifest themselves in the form of actions, then of course they become much more changeable. <coughs> then we say, Karma Shabdaya Vidyasa, Bhavana Karma Chaya. 
So we will say one of them will be samskara, in India we have to be only what we call the mental action performed, bhavana will have to be the empty, samskara, and karma will have to be the rituals performed. <coughs> So, the Tika says that Kalavina, Pravartakatwa, Vaishitram, Vichitre Karmani, Satyo, Pravartaka Yukta. So, since Kala, all of these are also actually stimulated by something, then the time also acts in a certain way and everybody, God or why is it? Some people say that now God also has become my enemy. Why? So, God also is stimulated by acting in a certain way because the karma actually stimulates those factors in those ways and they are right. Sati Eva Pravadika Dittam, only when that the time and all those factors act in a certain way, it is possible, only when it is reasonable or tenable, only when there is a stimulator, and so the karma is a stimulator. <coughs> and the Saab Pravati Apravati Eva Tidhi Uttha Avivastha Syarati. Otherwise, if that stimulating factor is not there, then Kala and Daiva and Ishvara can do things, may not do things. They do things in one way, they will do things in any way. And then the Devastha will not be there, they will be of Devastha. So we find Devastha. Devastha means that things and the cause and effect relationship is there. And that whatever happens seems to have a reason and that seems to have an order. And what is the determining that order? Only what we have to say, karma. Otherwise, I will so what is it? So I am stuck with something that I have not done. And then I am deprived of something that I have done. So, Krita Hani, Akrita Prapti. So, Hani, destruction, or being deprived of what I have done, and then being stuck with what I have not done, that will be called Avyavastha. Yavastha or order is that I have experienced the result of what I have done, and that I cannot be stuck with the result of what I have not done. This is called Yavastha, and that Yavastha will not be there unless this kind of unique stimulating factor is there. <coughs> because in the Pravrti, Aprti, Va, Aprti, Va, Aprti, Va, that God may act, may not act on this, so, and all the factors, so, how we must not carry it out. Karma Hayo is the Karma Shabdhat Mahana, Karma Hayo is the Pucha Kuru. So, what's the meaning of the word Karma? We are saying that Vidya is the Bhavana is the Karma Pucha Kuru. And then you can explain those words because we knew that it's been earlier in the Vahapika. Now the Chika continues. Kevala Meva Karma Karma Shabdam Kimna Kyaab and the whole page 134 also in the modern. Kevala Meva Karma Karma Shabdam Kimna Kyaab. So why the word Karma? Why not you understand Karma meaning the rituals or the actions performed the level of sense organs? Why don't you include this is mental action also another thing, deliberation, that's the house of one. And then it goes back to the verse. Deharam Vena Shubhnasya Karmana Shakti Ishade. Deharam Vena Shubhnasya Karmana Shakti Ishade. Shubhna means we cannot say that purely karma can decide what exactly, that I will be anyone. Karma can decide. Karma actually stimulates. So it is like saying that I by myself, by my desire, cannot build a house. I require an architect, I require a contractor, I require all the materials. No doubt my desire because the unique factors to why the house is the way it is. Why so many bedrooms are there and what is what? So my desire is a unique factor, but that is not enough. We require also the help of all other factors, which are common to everybody who builds a house. And so the common factors are also required. At the same time, an uncommon factor is my own So, Kevala, that's why you say here. Then, Dehanam Vena Shuddhasya, Karamana, Shakti Shiddhe, Tasma, Pritayam, Pritayam, Vyadar, Karma Shabdeva, Vindhade. Pritayam, Vinikis, Vidya, and Bhavana also should be included. So, Yasa Karma Ityadi Shuddhe, Yasa Karma, Yasa Shuddha, so, what you can say is the soul. Yatha karma yatha shudam. This fellow gains the birth. What is Yodhi Vanyaya saying to me? 
So some people need the human birth, some people get all the inferior yogi, etc. in accordance with karma and shruta. And the action, at the same time, the kind of deliberation that they had performed. So it's giving the nationality, we will say that, is not merely the action performed at the physical level, but then also, what is the intention behind that action? So action is visible at the physical level, all right, which may be identical or which may be similar. And still results can be significantly different. If the intentions behind the actions are different, so intentions are also very important. At the same time, the actions that perform the level of mind also are important. And therefore, merely actions perform the level of body, we cannot say are the only factor determining the destiny of a person. So the smart and so Vidya, Bhavana and Karma, all of this should be included by the word Karma. Vakya Atma Dinamayati Karma Hayvata Kuchitu Dinamayati Evan Evan Tau Sampradhari Eka Ukta Dhamshana Bhiplutam Yasa Om Paraloka Hayat Karma Yvasha Kuchitu Dhu even in this manner, Tau, Tau means what? Yajnavakya, Atamhara. Okay, those two, Yajnavakya and Atamhara. Sampradhariya. So, Prakashaya Dhari. So, very well, having thus determined very well, having deliberated and come to a conclusion, Etan, Ukta Dosha, Anavipradam. Ukta Dosha, Anavipradam. Where is Dosha that you say? So, where is Dosha or the defects? or in the faults rather. So there is faults that we indicated in case of the other thought processes or the other opinions. So they arrive at this conclusion which is free from the defects of thought or defects of our experience. In short, karma, alien malefactor is that which, more, which best explains the vyavastha or the happenings in our life. So to those terms, anavipradam, Yasoho, Yasoho means what? Yasoho. So one who is desirous of not departing. Paraloka Yasoho. The fellow is now desirous of departing to other world. Karma Yava Ashram, who is who? So they say, so they go for, so they say, Karma Yava Ashram. The Karma Yava Ashram, the unique factor determining the destiny of the fellow who wants to depart now to the other world. So, Parapakshesha Pukta Dosha Aspashtam Karma Yava. So, that is meant by Pukta Dosha Anavipritam Aspashtam. Karma, when we get, so Karma aided by the factors, that understanding or that opinion is free from the defects which is there in the human being. Atha Ityade Atmana Atha. So is it Prashatam Satuhu, Karma Hayata, Prashatam Satuhu and then what the extol? It is Karma that the extol. So they arrive at the conclusion that it is Karma that is the unique factor that decides destiny and therefore they extol Karma. Because Karma makes the person virtuous or Karma makes the person vicious in that sense, they extol Karma also. So that is Atha. <coughs> so Karmana. Say the word Karana Nami Kurtam Get Chitavu Prasasam Satuhu Karma Yoga Deshu Sarveshu Prasasam Satu Radha Karana Nami Kurtam So many Karana are there. They will say Ishwara, Deva, Deva and Tala. So many Karana are all there are there which are actually functioning simultaneously. So Yasukana Karana of various Karana are appreciated including the Guna and all of it are there. So the Karana and Sankhya are said to be Guna, all of that also there. So even all the Karana that have been presented, you know, are advanced as the Ashraya, Karana, Mithrapara, Yet Chito, Prashatam Satu, that is there to explore. Karmaiva, Upteshu, Sarveshu, from all of them, Karma is what? Adara. So Karma actually gains their Adara. Karma gains their respect. And so, Adara, 
access onto the roof, then go next door. Hindi Kathir. Avishishte Bhavunam Kanathre Kibiri Karma Prasam Sahite. Avishishte Bhavunam Kanathre When so many things are Karana, Avishishte means what? That Ishwar also is Karana, and Dev also is Karana, and Kala also is Karana, and Karma also is Karana. All of them enjoy the state of the being Karana of the cause. If all of them enjoy the state of the being cause, why do you identify, why do you, uh, actually, so why, why do you identify Karma as the most important one or the one that is to be explored? Kimidi Karo Prasamsa Vidyashankara Karnatve. So next verse is Karnatva Visheshevi Kim Pradhan Vidikshanai Karma Stiyat Prasamsayo Tat Pradhanyo Bhaktitaha Karnatva Visheshevi Even though others are also, they also enjoy the state of being Karnatva because Kim Pradhan Vidikshanai So when Iksham, so when we investigate into this, uh, what is Pratana, or what is the primary cause in Ikshana, when we deliberate upon that. Karnana Syat, Prasam, Karnana Syat, Prasam Sayyam, Tat Pranayo Pratana. So since Karma is Pratana and Karna, then what is Prasam Sayyam, Prasam that is calling is, is quite tangible, is quite reasonable. That's what the Gita says, Siddhivi Sarvetam Karnatve, Kim Pratana, Kimva Pradhan Viksha. So, who is the Sarvasham? Sometimes explanation is very long. Who is the Karnatve? So, they are all of them in the other state of being called. Kim Pradhan, which is the most important. Kimva Pradhan, which is secondary, which is the primary, and which is secondary. In the Ikshana, in the Vikshaya, when that deliberation is performed, there are all Prasamsa Dushte. Since we find that the city also extols Karma, Tat Pranayana Upatte Hai And so, all the way also the source Tat Pranayana Upatte Hai That's why Karma Siddhi is the primary cause Sa Atavari Sa Prasham Sa Atavari That Prasham Sa Atavari is quite proper Tat Pranayana Anvayadhe Kovi Pranayana Pramana Yati So, why Karma is Pranayana? Anvayadhe Kovi Pranayana Pramana Yati So, why Karma is Pranayana? Anvayadhe Kovi Pranayana Pramana Yati So, why Karma is Pranayana? So the words, going back to the words. Vashikrutyeshwaradini saranani svatantrata. Ishwaradini vashikrutya. So karma orders, you know. So karma says to Ishwara as though daivam kalam and everybody. And guna comes. Because of sattva, this comes out of the form of body. So karma actually orders all of them. Vashikrutya, Ishwaradini saranani svatantrata. And so karma is sotantra and this is the karana are those which are controlled by karma. Karma siddhya, yato dhrushtam, pradhan karma tenda, sotantra karma siddhya. So that word is mananyam. So karma appears to be like sotantra, enjoying greater freedom than the rest of the karma. Therefore, akaha, yataha, dhrashta, dhrushtu, pradhan karma tenda. Since karma, Svatantra, so karma appears to be Svatantra or independent with reference to other causes. Therefore, Tena, Karma, Tetra, Karma, Pradhana, Vishnu, Therefore, that Karma is Tignan, Pradhana. Vashitra, the Gita says, Uktami, Vaishya, Vinayajunyena, Sarakshatvali. So this is Sutra from, this is Brahma Sutra. Vaishyamya Nairunya, we have discussed this in the past and of course we have talked about it. So, in Ishwara, Vaishyamya and Nairunya are not there. Ishwara is not partial, nor is true. Vaishyamya Nairunya, no. So, Vaishyamya Nairunya, the partiality and cruelty is not, are not there in Ishwara. Why? Sabhakshatva. Because what Ishwara or God does, also is Sabhakshatva. Karma Vaishyamya. So, Ishwara also does what it does. In a patient, in keeping with or in accordance with karma. Therefore, we cannot blame or kill Ishwara of God with partiality and cruelty. <coughs> then what we can say? That even Ishwara also is controlled by karma. Ishwara is, is a ruler, a true ruler. But in a way, 
Ishvara also is obliged to do things in a certain way. And who obliged, what obliged is Ishvara also? Sharma. In that sense, it is a Rushi Pratya. Not that there is anybody uh, higher than Ishvara or some sort. In a way, Ishvara, in a way, is also as though controlled by the karma. And therefore, of course, this is a way of looking at it. You can always look at things in a different way. You can always say Ishvara is ultimate thing, ultimate one, he alone does what he does. And karma is there. How can karma determine, you know, how can karma control Ishvara? This controversy is born of it. As you say, you cannot hire a man like Ishvara. But this is the most uh, plausible answer to explain the Vyavastha or the order that we experience in our life. But the thing is, Vishwara, how do you call it Vishwara? Vishwara also does not have freedom to, uh, to do what he wills to do. No. That he also cannot violate the rules or he cannot also uh, transgress the rules. He has made the rules. If he knows bound by the rules, then the rules are rules. We have Vishwara or what? That cannot be that word. You cannot say that Ishwara has to follow the rules. That means Ishwara's fancy will come. If his fancy comes, then why did he do this and why did he not do that? Then I mean, we are always ready. If you say that he has fancy, then we always accuse him of being partial. And if he has no fancy, then we accuse him of being, uh, being controlled. Either he is being controlled or he is being partial. Because nobody can win this world. Neither even so Ishwara also cannot. Ishwara also can. There is, there is a no win situation. <laughs> that being the case, the only answer is this is all Mithya. I mean, I am simply going to say that this is all Mithya. And therefore, you can go to these things up to a certain point. Why did this happen that all this business can be pursued up to a certain point? Beyond that point, give it up. Otherwise, you can you go down and down and without any end to this business. So, Mithya, 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 what? Final end. Those conclusive answers cannot be. If conclusive answer, then it's not Mithya. If conclusive answer is there, then it is truth. So truth alone is a conclusion. Or that that is you can consider about. You can say something about. But then nothing else you can say, any specific or conclusive thing about. Of course, I think the answer is that who is doing what? To whom? Ultimately, Ishwara is nothing than a bit too bad on a car. So therefore, suppose you say that Ishwara is actually inflicting this fellows with punishment, etc. He is inflicting with punishment on whom? Who is doing punishment himself? And therefore, the karma of the also is himself, karma of the also is himself, and the recipient of that stuff also is himself. Therefore, where is the cruelty? Cruelty can be there when I do something to someone else, when I do something to myself, not cruelty. Is what? Leela Kaivalyam. <laughs> that becomes Leela. That is all Ishwara's Leela. The rules become too serious about things. The rules become tense. It's all in the way. Take it easy. Yeah, but okay. After all, he alone is, is not that he's different and somebody else is different. And the word. So why do you live this and not that? It's, it's myself. You know? <laughs> 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 it's, it's only a sport. Ultimate answer is, no answer can be given. Ultimate answer is, he's the only one. Ekameva is the name. Since he's the one and only one. Everything is alright also. Everything is mithya also. At the same time, everything is fine also because he alone is. <coughs> and then we only need a great Vedanta that can give an answer to this. Nobody else can give an answer. Everybody, are, everybody else is a dualist. Taking Ishwara as different from us and different from the world as with the Karanamuzi. And they cannot give an answer. Then they will ask, they have to make the Shara. That's all they have to say. They in fact, Yes. That's why in Christian and elsewhere they keep on asking questions and people give there will be silence. You can silence them either way. You can silence them uh, by silencing them or you can ask them to keep quiet, you know, and wait as Buddha did. So Buddha also asked them to keep quiet. And they don't worry about it. Forget it. You know, pay attention to where you pray. Because people get distracted with all this stuff. And they, they, they don't know what is to be done. And so this why business, you know, why, why, why that goes on and on, without any conclusion, the fellow will get, get crazy, you know. And so, okay, leave it and do what you have to do. That's how Lord Vinay got it. So the only answer is this, that whatever it is, we get to Ishwar alone and never. Nobody is doing anything to anybody else. And so it's still a thing that used to be there, it will be an egg, be now. So why should we do it now? 
if these five bodies get transformed into that particular kind of body, so that he can stay there according to his karma and experience the various sense objects there. So even when he departs, so even Preta also has some kind of body, until he reaches another embodiment, some kind of body is there. When we live, when why we have prana, but then some body is there. But at the same time, it doesn't have gross body, he doesn't have this devata also, because they also gone away from him. So he stayed there for Yasma Allah Mala Preta. Devata Vinaypi Na. Na means the Nara. The accusative, I mean the nominative singular of Nara is Na, Nara Nara. So Nara is the singular of Nara and plural of Nara. Anyway, so Devata Vinaypi, you know, <coughs> Devata are not there because they are already gone. Na. And so, what is Vag, Dhima, Kedi, and so forth. So only in Devadana, we saw it to that respective cosmic uh, aspects. The Hara Smart, or in Bhishtahana, now having uh, separated from this body. Karma Pradhani Samshaya, so Karma Yana Pradhani Samshaya, so this is Upaskara. The Smart Deva, Apaha, Prekaha, Devata, Venai, Vina, so Deha Sarva Smart, or in Bhishtahana, Karma Pradhani Samshaya, Punya, Punya Nanodi, Papa, Papa, and Karma Nanodi. He becomes virtuous if he has performed virtuous actions in the past and becomes vicious because of the vicious actions. Or the same person then displays virtuous tendencies when the virtuous actions are fructifying and the same person also shows vicious tendencies when the vicious actions are fructifying or whatever. Or a person who possesses virtuous nature because of virtuous karma and vicious nature because of the vicious karma. It is Shodam Vajaha Nyaya Maharaja Eka Pramana. Great name, Adam Eka Pramana. It is Shodam Vajaha Nyaya. This is how you are understanding the Vajaha meaning this statement was today. Agam eka pramanatah, because Agam, our one, the Veda, is the only pramanam, and therefore, this is how we will understand the statement of the Shri. Punya, Punya Mahodi, Papa, Papa, and Papa. So, the Gita says here, Tava Prayutam, Graha Vidraatma, Karya Karnam, Upadana, Deva, Deva, Siddham. So, Graha Vidraatma, Karya Karnam, Upadana, that a person acquires this upadhi which is called karyankarna. The body is karyam, the gross body is karyam, subtle body is karyam. So karyakarna, karna upadhanam, upadhanam means taking. Then this jiva takes a particular upadhi consisting of a gross and a subtle body. Grahadi, grahadmada. And this gross and subtle bodies are <coughs> of the nature of graha and atheism. So, in the growth in the sun, in the sun, in the sun, etc., the graham, the attachment is already built. That means that this fellow acquires a new embodiment wherein there is already a built attachment for the sense object, and therefore he is being controlled by those attachments. All of this he actually acquires in his new life. Karma Purvitam is stimulated by Karma. So, what kind of attachments I have, what kind of aversions I have, all of this is determined by my past karma and the samskaras and my past intentions. Ideogyanaha <coughs> siddham, since this is what I mean, this is the meaning, arrived at or logically arrived at. Ataha, prekna means what? Sulodeva, nirinato, mutaha, kuma. Therefore, this jiva, mutaha, who is dying, who is, who is dead, sulodeva, nirinato. So that is the Deha the smart Paribhrashta. That means full Deha Devata has every department of his body. Kumar, then Devata Virahimi, Nam is Kumar. Devata Virahimi, what? This Chatra Devata, Bhaga Bhavemi. So he doesn't have the benefit of the Devatas. Bhaga means what also? As they say, all the Devatas reside here in his body, or in his body, in their, as their fraction. The sun also resides in my eyes and agni in my speech and so forth. Then Adhishthatra Devata Bhaga, Adhishthatra Devata Amsha. So the Amsha are there 
All the fractions are there, all the devdas are present here. When you depart from here, those devdas are not there because they have already gone away to their, their world. Kalari Sahagra Karmavala. So Kalari Sahagra Karmavala. Karma Kalari Samsaya. Kalari Sahagra. The karma aided by Kalari Sahagra. Deva Ishwara aided by them. Oh, he, he is aided by Deva, not as residing in his body, but as obtaining his cosmic energy. So Kalari Sahagra Karmavala. Pauna Kuniya Samsaya. So, Again and again, he takes up embodiment. So much for me in some survey, he did it. After a man of some of it, he did it. This is the one. He did show some of the name. I will make up the man. Say the Jika, Karmeva, Kala, the Sahagram, Rutasya, Bandha Prayodikam. In short, this Brahmana was to determine the Prayodikam. Bandha Prayodikam. Bandha was explained as Graha and Adi Graha, the attachment and Prayodikam. So what is that stimulated boundary in the nature of attachment? It is karma that is the stimulating factor, primary stimulating factor. Karma yoga kalani sahagra murta sit and the prayodikam and never. Even as this will depart from here, his destiny is always determined by the karma that is performed. And he will be born bound to me. Because his living his body is a bound entity, Therefore, he will be born in another embodiment also as a common entity. In Tasya Bandha Prayodhya Vidhi, Asya Alokya Prayodhya Karma Yoga Alokya So Karma is something that is really outwardly, otherworldly. So, Alokya Prayodhya, Adamatra Dhamitma, this is something that we cannot determine. Alokya Prayodhya also a motion. So, this is not something that we can determine. So, if possible factors are there, and so even we cannot say with all the reasoning also conclusively that karma is the primary factor. Ultimately, we, we provide reasoning the way we do in keeping with what the Shruti says. So ultimate pramana to say is Shruti. Karma hevata prasasam sutuhu. Then they praise karma. And so Shruti says that karma is the one determined by them as the primary factor. So, Anavadhyaprayana. It is a low between Agma Matu and Nitwa. Therefore, this can be determined only from Agma, meaning from the scriptures. Asmina Tere, the book of Vajana Mahan. Therefore, this Vajana of the Shruti, Punna Vipunya and Kamana Mahavi, Papa Papa. So, one has these tendencies, either virtuous or vicious, that is a boundary. So, attachment is of different kinds. Attachment can be also virtuous attachment or there can be vicious attachment or the attachment is brought by the karma. Punyavai, Punyavai karma anavadi, Papa Pada. It is especially not the way, the Tarukta Vachana Mahana, therefore, to determine the Pradhana and the karma, this Vachana, this statement of Pada Shruti, Punyavai, Punyavai karma anavadi, is the Mahana, because the Mahana, to determine that karma is the primary stability. It just this second Brahmana, the Art of Agha Brahmana, is just concluded. Of course, all of this is going to be again brought up by Mahashakara and the third Brahmana is called the Bhujju Brahmana, that is the personal state. A person by the name of Bhujju. Anyway, and so there, Mahashakara, before going to that, a long discussion there. So all of this will be summarized again in the Mahashagara. But here the Atavada Brahmana, the second Brahmana primarily aimed at determining the primary stimulating factor for the bondage and the configuration of the bondage. Everybody is <coughs> so the bondage also is all unique with everybody, you know. And so that is determined by karma. So stimulating factor is karma, which is always an asset in here.
that's the reason why the sense objects can create, in fact, they can, they can control me. The reason why sense objects can control me is, of course, because the sense organs are there. There may be kind of sense objects in the world about which we have no experience at all, in which case, they have no influence upon us. So as it comes to know of new things, then they can have influence upon us. The fact that sense objects have influence upon us is of course because sense organs are there, because we are able to perceive them. And therefore we are able to perceive either their nature of giving us the pleasure or pain, and that's how they become binding to us. So by stimulating, so by creating the stimulation of the, of the they by stimulating the desire to enjoy them. So these vasanas in fact stimulate the desire, that's why the karma comes. So with the vasana and the karma. The desires are there because the stimulation is there. And <coughs> stimulation is there because vasana are all that potential, the tendencies are there. And they are there because ignorance is there. So ignorance creates naturally the vasanas, the tendency to, to become free. And therefore, also the desire therefore, and the ignorance again of the sense objects make me feel that they will make me free. And therefore, superimposing the idea of the happiness of freedom where it is not, and superimposing the idea of bondage and pain where it is not in the self, this ignorance creates there for the vatana, the natural tendency, which is what we call extrovertedness. So, parantikani vatana swayam guhu, the very person is extrovert. The smart parant person is nantaratman. And therefore, one always looks out and not towards oneself because of this natural tendency, <coughs> extroverted. And that is why person is prone to be influenced by the sense object. And this is how he is not the sense object or sense organs that really are bonded, but it is ignorance that's bonded. And the vasana or the extrovertedness that is created by ignorance, again that bonded. So that bondage becomes manifest. First bondage is because of ignorance. And that ignorance creates a vasana or extrovertedness. And that is what we will mean by that. So we can say it is the, the uh, aviveka or the vipreeta, you know, vipreeta bhavana. <coughs> so what is the nityam looking upon that is nityam like the body or the sukham looking upon that is sukham like the sense objects and whatever. So all of these create the vasana, extrovertedness. And they create the various desires. And then the sense objects and sense organs become nimitta. They become the occasions <coughs> for stimulating various desires and prompted by which a person performs karma. And that's how avidya vasana karma prashti prayata sahita So that's the avidya vasana. <coughs> so prayata sahita. So along with this prayata sahita are stimulants. These are all stimulants. So stimulants are the ignorance, the vasanas and the ignorance of karma the stimulants. So vismat, so graha and jati graha again become the bonded binding factors only when there are stimulants. If the stimulants are not there, <coughs> the sense organs and sense objects cannot become binding. So the one doesn't have to do anything with the sense objects or sense organs, one has to do something with the stimulants. The stimulants are vidya, karma, karma. <coughs> avidya vasana, then karma karma. Or avidya karma karma. So that the word vasana is used here. <coughs> the smart saprayavika mukta hai, mukta means vyukta hai, munchare, samsara, mukhedi. So one crosses this ocean of samsara <coughs> by being released from the hold of this grand ethic. <coughs> Therefore we say that they are the minimum of the nature of bondage. <coughs> Not, and then again, it is not that liberated, at least from that we become liberated, but that tied to which we become bound. So, so tied to which, grahatikaha, along with the students, samsarati and the one, continues with the cycle of bhaktandai, samhutyu, samhutyu, that's the reason why the graha and the ethical graha are said to be mature in that. <coughs> Can say that very agnilvayu, ityadu, kam smarayati. 
The idea is there when the wise man says, I want to leave, what? What is that does not leave him? Name alone does not leave him, meaning that he remains only in name, that means that he doesn't remain at all. And therefore, the wise man is completely, uh, the wise man, personality is completely dissolved in its causes and no nucleus and no personality remains at all. At <coughs> least the wise man gets liberated. So there is liberation. Without leaving any residue at all, name is the only residue that is left. If some other residue is left, then the fellow has to come back. But no residue is left other than name. So it is also not a residue. It is reduced to name, which means that it is reduced to nothing. And of course, Vashaka also said, Nanantam Vainama, so name also is eternal. In that sense, wise man becomes eternal. That also you can say. <coughs> so going back to Anil, Yatra Vitya Loka Manudravati, so what is said there? That the wise man gets liberated totally, again that is being reached at the end. Mukta Then he doesn't have anywhere to go. When he dies, nothing remains. If something remains, then it has to go somewhere. <coughs> that departure or the transmigration will be there if after death something remains. In case of the ignorant person, something remains. What remains? His ahankara remains. His certain body remains. And that's the reason why this ignorant person has to transmigrate. For the wise man, nothing remains. These pranas will not depart. They just get dissolved right here. They get merged into it. They get merged into Parangrama, which is his own self. Never, there is no residue at all. <coughs> so this is the kind of definition of moksha that that Upanishad gives. One of the definitions, you know, then there is nowhere to go. Because the whole complex of transmigration, the whole complex of the next birth is weighing so heavily that people don't want to have anything to do with it. Many people want it. Many people want to go heaven and stuff like that, you know, and they want to enjoy it. We need to come back. And that, that was an old cycle of going and coming from continuous. Jatagatam, Kam, Kama, Lamande. So Kam, Kama, Kamyande, Kama, those who are desiring all the time desirable objects, Jatagatam, they keep on coming and going. That's all right with them. But there are a few who do not want that. So they realize that being born itself is a misery. Because birth is the source, not the source, but the beginning of all the misery. Because the moment birth is there, and there is all the fear of death, and then there is old age, disease, and all kinds of stuff, and then birth. Birth is associated with all kinds of misery. So human life is built upon the life of misery. This is a way. And that's the reason why one wants to be liberated from the cycle of birth. <coughs> that's why. But anyway, as long as something remains of my personality so long, that personality must find a medium to express itself. Nothing of the personality remains, whatever, never. There is no, no limited or limited existence anymore. <coughs> so this is the Mukta Sya. That is the idea. <coughs> so there is nothing remains. That's what it is, Mukta Sya. So Master says, Mukta Sya. Mukta Sya. Sarvo Sadha 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 Sarvot sadha. So, the term is true. Mishiganan tot sadha. Sarvot sadha. All the other sadha are completely vanished or gone again. Namanatra avasesha. Meaning remaining or existing as an individual itself is anatta. So, existing as an individual who is separate. That's another way of looking at it. is this sense of division. That I am separate from the world. So, vidya advai, I am how the, the life has been thought about. So, Dvitiya Advai Bhayam Bhavati. There is Bhaya of the fear as long as there is a sense of division. The world is different and I am different. Which means that there is always a sense of limitation as long as I am separated from something. 
and that sense of limitation always causes a threat. That because sense of limitation means the sense of possession also. That when I am limited to a given body or a given individuality, then there is a possession that this is all. So far I am. And the individuality is not that I will wipe out, and nobody wants to wipe out. And since nobody wants to wipe out, they will protect whatever they possess or whatever they consider to be their existence. And so there is always a life of protecting myself. I am, I am, there is always a threat, you know, from the world, always a source of threat, and I must protect myself. So, that is another way of looking at the life. What this fellow is doing is all the time functioning or operating from the platform of fear. Because he always sees that he will wipe out. And so that is why he always fear. And that is also nothing but samsara. But then that is why sarvotsara. All the fear is gone away from him. All the sense of individuality is gone away. Anath. All the anathas have gone away. All the calamity, the wrong kind of suffering is gone away from him. Nikhila anathotsara. <coughs> Namatra Avasheshaha. So, if anything remains to the personality, that is anath. Namatra Avasheshaha. There is no residue other than name, meaning there is no residue at all. Pradeepa Nirvana. Like a lamp that is, so lamp that is burnt are all the fuel. And so lamp that is extinguished, like a flame that is extinguished, because all the fuel is exhausted. All the fuel is burned. <coughs> Here the fuel is the nature of the stimulant. So the deeper, the deeper the lamp here is in the form of this when the bondage, grahati graha, etc. And that lamp ring of the bondage remains as long as the stimulants are there. The vidya, karma, karma, all the stimulants are gone. So pranik nirvana, it is avadhutam. So this is what is ascertained that no existence of this wise man remains. This is interesting. The people who want to wipe out their existence. Quite the opposite of the West, they do not want the existence to wipe out, they only want to remain. <coughs> we do not want the philosophy where our existence is wiped out. And so, they want to retain their existence and they want to be liberated. But here, we say that the very idea of an individual existence itself is bonded. Individual existence cannot have that freedom at all. You can have freedom to a certain point, but you cannot be totally free. How are exalted, and that's why here also all the time the attempts to remain individual were always there. So this jnana karma smutya that we talked about, this the combination of the rituals, <coughs> meditation, etc., is to retain my sense of individuality and make my individual exalted. So person wants to regain his sense of individuality, and again he wants to become big. And he wants to exalt the level of individual so that he remains free from any kind of sense of limitation. So, in fact, that is the point that we made in this particular Brahmana, in the introduction itself, that regardless of how exalted we become, as long as there is even a slight sense of individuality, so long you cannot be liberated. You can be liberated from many different things, but you cannot be liberated totally, as long as a sense of individuality remains. So that very sense of individuality, Itself is a sense of, so as long as says, any kind of complex I entertain is bonded. Any kind of complex I entertain, however great, even though I think that I am an emperor, even then, that itself is a bondage of some kind. You can be either, that can be, you can be chained in the, the golden shackles, or you can chain iron shackles, that's a different matter. But then shackles they are nevertheless. <coughs> and so therefore, so it is necessary that no individual existence remains. The illustrations are also given like that. Yatha Nandira Shantana Samutram Astam Bhakshandri Anamote So all the viewers, they become completely, you know, they, they give up that to individual children. And we look forward to that. So we look forward to that and not that there is any kind of fear in that because Giving up the individuality is embracing the totality. So you cannot embrace the totality unless you give up the individuality. In short, one cannot embrace greatness unless we give the smallness. So this is nothing but the process of giving up smallness. And how how much how far can you go with smallness until nothing remains? That much one can give up. That nothing remains. 
Gajanam is giving up, giving up, giving up. This is what is taught in our scriptures. Give me that. Atma Samadhan. Self-sacrifice is what is being taught rather than self-glorification. So here the life of self-glorification is not glorified as much as the life of self-sacrifice. Because however glorified you are, you are still going to be limited. And however glorified you are, you can never be that generous. The person, on the other hand, who sees glorification in sacrifice, there is no bond in generosity at all, and therefore generosity. So that is also what is being praised. And therefore, this culture is always glorified self-sacrifice rather than self-glorification. Our heroes have not been great emperors, etc. Our heroes have been great people who sacrifice their life. So somebody asked somebody else, who are, who are the six great people who you think are uh, there you know, in the world? And Jesus Christ and Gautam Buddha and you know, six names you get. A couple of names I did not even know. He forgot to give me a heart of money, of course, for them. So, but these are the people, Ashok, King Ashok, Emperor Ashok. Not because of the Emperor, because he gave this kingdom. So, that was these people are always built upon as great people who are totally <coughs> sacrificed. <coughs> So you can see how the very concept, concept of what is it that we are seeking to accomplish in life that determines the direction in which we always go. The direction is always self-sacrifice. Of course, all the religious cultures will in one way or the other emphasize self-sacrifice. But here the self-sacrifice is emphasized because it is a direct means because we look upon life as nothing but a life of sacrifice. Until you truly sacrifice yourself. And you cannot sacrifice anything at the end, you sacrifice the body. And finally, if the final thing left with me, then you also sacrifice. And so, you <coughs> sacrifice. At least this symbolic, the symbolic expression is there always of sacrifice. <coughs> of course, the whole idea of Kartavya and Dharma is all based on sacrifice. <coughs> all you can sacrifice are done. The reason why the idea of sacrifice is there, because what one can sacrifice in Ananta? Ananta means only suffering can be alone sacrifice, nothing else can be sacrificed. Therefore, sacrifice is no problem because the more you sacrifice, more great you become. This is like me. And me, which means I am giving, yet cross, safety, all the meaning, the more path, and all this is the Rutta Vrutta Kirtan. So, page 723. Verse 3 to 13. <coughs> now talking about the death of an ignorant person, when all these different faculties, meaning the presiding deities, they must back in their causes. In case of an ignorant person, there is no extinction of the personality. In case of a wise man, the whole personality is extinguished. In case of the <coughs> Ignorant person, the personality doesn't get extinguished. It remains potentially there, it remains there, except that it remains in a form which is at the moment unmanifest. So all the presiding deities, presiding deities of the various faculties, they depart from here and they merge into the individual forms. So Agni Vagapiri, Vagapni Vapiri, the faculty of speech. Merges into fire. Faculty of speech in the presiding deity of faculty of speech is in fire. So fire resides in the faculty of speech as a little fraction. So this fraction merges into its total source, totality. And Vadu Prana, this prana, this breath, merges into total, total breath of the total white energy. And Chakshu Arityam, the Aritya who resides in my Chakshu Arityam, the eyes. It merges into Mahavita that is totality. So this is how the presiding deities are saying to merge into their respective sources. <coughs> okay, so that one. We will wait 735. Tatra Tatra Samsarana Samsarana Mujjamana Namcha Mujjamana Namcha Karana, 